Hello, everybody. Um, I'm going to be talking about TwoFix today, which is uh, something I've been working on. It's a little microtasking platform. Uh, so my name is Aaron. Uh, I work at Mapbox, and the primary thing that I work on there is uh, improving OpenStreetMap data. Um, OK, is that better? Cool. Um, so I work primarily on improving OpenStreetMap data at Mapbox. Um, we use OpenStreetMap data everywhere um, in our base map primarily, but also um, routing for directions. So we have a routing API um, that you can use. Um, so while we, while we use OpenStreetMap everywhere, we also have customers that use it everywhere. And it's very important that uh, these customers have the best map available, um, especially large-scale sites. Uh, customers like uh, Foursquare, Pinterest, GitHub, the Financial Times, and so on. Um, we want to be able to display the most accurate map possible for them and have directions that are actually accurate, giving them like the right roads to go down. We don't want to send people down the wrong roads and have problems for them. So um, basically, we're trying to build the best map in the world, along with all of you guys. Um, so with that said, I want to preface the rest of my talk by saying um, OpenStreetMap data is fantastic, that it's already really, really good. And while I'm going to be pointing out lots of little issues with it, um, it's really good. There's, uh, it's, there's global coverage. It's open data. You guys are aware of like the license, how easy it is to download. Uh, and it's growing very quickly. There's a strong community around this data. It's really great. I don't think I need to sell these points to this audience. But at the same time, this data can be a lot better. Um, primarily, what I have to do on a daily basis is try and nitpick and find issues in this data and see where we can improve these things. So some of the most common issues are places that are just completely unmapped. Um, you guys see this all the time. You go into like a town in rural America or somewhere else in the world, an undeveloped country possibly, and uh, this area is completely unmapped. Um, there might be data that's available from another source um, that's licensed correctly that hasn't made its way into OpenStreetMap or somebody just hasn't spent the time to trace the area. Um, but it's largely off the map. But then there's also intri intrinsic systemic issues uh, with data that's already in OpenStreetMap. And this is primarily what I'm focusing on, data that's already there that needs to be improved. So uh, these are problems that aren't necessarily regional. They aren't specific to, say, a certain state or a certain country even. Um, these are globally distributed. They occur throughout the data, the data set. And uh, they're really common bugs that we find all over the place. Um, there's various reasons for this. Some of it is due to imports or scripts that were used for bringing this data in from their, data, from their original sources. Some of it is tied to the tools that people are editing with. Um, and a lot of it is just human error. The same, the same ability that OpenStreetMap has to grow around crowdsourcing is also a hindrance. Like having humans do these things is a liability, but it's really uh, the best way of doing these things. So these problems exist, and it's a matter of trying to find them and fix them. And at Mapbox, we we're building up a data team to work on these things. So. Um, I'm going to give some examples of some of the issues that we're looking at. This is just a couple of the things. Um, there's many, many more, but these are the primary ones that I'm focused on. So connectivity of the road network. This is basically just how the road network actually connects to other roads. Um, this is very important for routing. Um, it makes it impossible to route if the roads aren't actually connected to each other, um, which is pretty obvious. But looking at the map, you don't see these things very readily. Um, if you're just looking at a base map, uh, the map that's styled on osm.org, you don't see these things. Um, they aren't highlighted. They're very hard to detect. Um, so simply put, this issue is where the roads don't, have, don't actually connect correctly from one point to another. Um, this is an example of finding one of these places. You have to zoom way, way in on the map to actually see what's going on. And they're usually disconnected by just a couple of feet. Um, so in this example, it was, let me go back and play that again. Um, in this example, it, happened, it occurred right in the middle of a road. It wasn't even at an intersection or anything like that. It was uh, two ways that are just slightly disconnected by a couple of feet. Um, so what we're trying to do is use existing tools and build our own tools for detecting these problems and then 
send it out to our team to actually get it fixed. So these issues are really easy to fix. This one in particular you saw, um, it's just a matter of snapping those two nodes together. Um, this is the lowest hanging fruit and it's the most systematic issue that we have. Um, it prevents our routing from working correctly and getting it fixed is really easy. So this is our highest priority, these connectivity issues. Um, impossible one ways is another one, which is highways that are tagged as being one way that really don't, that doesn't coordinate with the rest of the road network. Um, if somebody was to actually drive down one of those roads, it would, um, they wouldn't be able to either get out or go into that area. So let me go back. So in this example here, you see the highlighted road. Uh, somebody can navigate up the road, but they can't actually get out because it's not connected to anything where it isn't a one-way. Um, let me see. So that's supposed to be playing. So yeah, that highlighted road is a one-way street that comes off of a highway that somebody can't actually go to the end of because it doesn't connect to anything else. If they were to go down that, they would never be able to get out. So we don't actually route anybody down this road, but it needs to be connected to the rest of the network in some way. So we're trying to highlight that here that in this case, um, there's a whole neighborhood that's missing. Uh, someone needs to go in there and add the residential streets and connect it to the rest of the network, which would help us out. But um, this is something that would be unsafe for somebody to drive down and something we want to fix. Uh, another issue is highways intersecting highways. These are things, these are just highways that are overlapping each other. Two lines that intersect, but not at a point. Um, these are also impossible to route over. And really simple fix, you just draw a line over the two highways, a point where the two highways intersect. So in this case, it's the pink one that is highlighted and the one that's intersecting it right in the middle. Um, really simple fix, really large scale issue. Um, kinks are another issue. This was actually a problem that came up with uh, Potlatch. Um, you don't really see an issue in this, the way it's highlighted here, but if you keep zooming down, way down, um, there's lots of these little kinks everywhere, all over OpenStreetMap in the road network. Um, they don't cause, cause very serious issues, but they're really, really annoying. And um, you do see them show up when you're routing. The geometry you get back from the routing API will be slightly kinked as well. So really easy fix. You can just remove one of those nodes there. Um, but we want to get eyes on this and get it fixed. Uh, overlapping buildings is another really common issue. Um, just people drawing buildings or buildings from an import that overlap that shouldn't. Um, usually also a pretty simple fix. Uh, another issue we're looking at are Tiger improvements. So I think most people are aware of Tiger making up the data set for the US in OpenStreetMap. Uh, so Tiger was originally imported from 2006, but in the years since then, there have been many, many improvements. Tiger's gotten dramatically better. Um, so what we're doing is trying to compare Tiger from 2006 to the modern equivalent from 2014. And what we're able to do is highlight roads that are completely missing from the, from OpenStreetMap that are existing in Tiger, um, but also alignment issues where the Tiger from 2014 is significantly better from 2006. And in this case, it's highlighting an area that is completely misaligned. So while the pink line is showing a road that is slightly misaligned, the surrounding area is also misaligned. So getting eyes in that area is another priority of ours. So. Uh, in short, there's lots to do, and we need to get lots of eyes on this. We're building our team to actually fix these things um, one by one. And we're pulling in this data from third-party sources, existing projects in OpenStreetMap that other people are running that make data available for us. So um, there's community-run projects. We don't really coordinate with anybody. Um, but what they provide are large data dumps that we can consume and use. Um, this tells us where to look. Um, so while they provide data dumps, these data dumps are usually just large text files, either CSVs or SQL dumps that uh, give a list of every occurrence of these issues happening in the database. And while this is very useful for us to look at, um, it's not very easy to send that out to a team to work on. Um, that's not easy to digest for, let's say, a team of 20. So um, this is what that, an example of what some of that data might look like. 
um, you're given just a series of files, in this case CSVs, and each of those files contain tens of thousands of lines. Um, if we were to give each of these files to somebody on the team or even give them chunks of these files, it's not exactly easy for them to then say jump into an editor and get mapping very quickly. So um, we need a way of splitting up this work and we need a way of managing the work and the users that are gonna be doing that work. Um, so one of the bigger questions here is what is the unit of work that everybody should be working on? Um, in the previous case, there was a single file, which we could split up and send out to different members on a team, but how are we gonna coordinate those units of work? And how are we gonna stay up to date with the changes that everybody's making against a live database? Um, what would each person actually be working with? Would they be working with a CSV file that contains tens of thousands of issues to work on? Um, and how technically savvy would they need to be to work with these types of things? Um, so this is an example of what one of those files actually looks like. In this case, it's a CSV with um, way IDs, node IDs, and well-known text of where the issue actually occurs in OpenStreetMap. Um, this is really unfriendly for anybody working on this. Um, there's a significant burden for somebody who has to deal with a file like this. They have to know exactly what to do with each of these columns um, and how to look it up against Live Database or against the OpenStreetMap website. Um, if we had multiple people working with multiple files like this, how are they going to coordinate with each other? And what happens when they conflict with each other? Um, working with data like this, our first naive attempt at Mapbox was to just put everything on a map. Um, take all of these files, put everything on a map, and highlight them in a really pretty way so that everybody could just like pan around and work together. Um, and what we found was that while we could have them focus on bounding boxes, we would literally like just draw an area and say, Ruben, you can focus on this area today, and Edith, you focus on this other area. We had to do this every morning. We had to tell them different areas to focus on, and um, very quickly we realized this didn't scale past two or three people. Um, so while we could do this by just making a simple map, we needed to find a tool that would allow us to coordinate much more quickly and scaled with a team that we wanted to grow. So what we really needed was a collaborative to-do list, um, a tool that would allow multiple people to work together without getting in each other's way. Um, we needed something that would grow with the team, and we needed to give everybody on the team something that was really simple to work on, that, uh, that unit of work, what would that look like? So this is, uh, this is why we built Twofix. Um, Twofix distributes work, the large mapping work that I talked about earlier among uh, our data team at Mapbox. So um, this is done by creating microtasks from those CSV files that I showed earlier and handing out individual really, really small units of work for a single individual to work on. Uh, in the back end, Twofix handles, let's see, Twofix will handle um, multiple users working on things and fixing multiple issues. So this is an example of so this is what Twofix looks like in action. It's highlighting a single issue. In this case, it's highlighting um, a road that is missing in OpenStreetMap that is available in Tiger data. Um, so there are buttons at the, pro at the bottom with really common actions that somebody can perform. Um, they can edit, they can click edit, which will either open up ID directly in the browser right there, or um, JOSM. It'll jump them over to JOSM and center the map on exactly which view they need to be looking at. Um, so yeah, it highlights just a single error that they need to work on and tell them where to focus. And because we're doing this all in the browser, we're able to pull in other data, we're able to overlay other tile layers, and we're able to hit other APIs that are outside of OSM or Mapbox or whatever. Um, we can use the information that was in the original CSV files and hit external APIs to return results, which we can show to people on the team to better inform how they're gonna map. Um, so ultimately what Twofix allows us to do is be systematic with how we're going to be improving the map. Um, where previously we were really unorganized and we just allowed people to pan around and say, outline a bounding box, this allows us to go down a list one by one and hand out items. Um, Ultimately, it's replacing the individual item in the text files 
with a single map view. Um, this makes it a lot more manageable. Uh, the buttons allow some, for some really quick actions with what you have currently available at you, in front of you, and it hooks into existing tools like ID and JOSM, uh, either directly in the browser or you can jump to the external app. So um, this makes the work really manageable, and the users, the separate users will be coordinating automatically without having to know what to do um, and go through all the work that is at hand. Um, what this is actually doing when it hits the API is it's wrapping up every individual item that is a line in a CSV file and presenting it as JSON through an API. Uh, this makes it really simple for interacting with in the browser and then hitting external APIs but we're also really flexible because we can pull in any CSV with any headers, any information in it, any columns. It's totally unopinionated and flexible because we really needed it to be. Um, we were dealing with different types of tasks at Mapbox, and we weren't sure if we were going to be dealing with way IDs, node IDs, GeoJSON, well-known text. Um, so it's completely unopinionated on what type of CSVs you feed into it. Um, this really helps us do a wide variety of tasks. So Twofix helps track items. Um, it makes it really easy for us to um, work in really close proximity. Um, one of the first examples of this was we wanted to demonstrate how we could work on a small area in Tokyo. Um, so this is all, the, all of the issues in Japan that we were able to highlight. Um, this is mostly road network issues of varying degrees of severity, and we looked at Tokyo as a prime example, and we wanted to see how quickly we could get through some things. So um, on the left is before, on the right is after. This is after three days of work by four people on our team. They knocked out 5,000 errors by just loading up that region into Twofix and going through every item one by one. Um, Twofix also tracks users. Um, one of the things we want to do is see what every user is doing, and we want to see which buttons they click and how much time they're spending on these tasks. So it's really flexible in that we can track just about anything. Um, the way that API works is it's also very flexible in what we can send to it. Um, we just have to expose it in a different way on this graph. Um, we're thinking maybe we want to track how many times somebody actually moves a map around or how many seconds they're actually looking at something. If somebody maybe clicks these buttons too quickly, we need to highlight some of their edits. So. It's really flexible in how it's tracking users and keeping users from conflicting with each other. Um, just to touch on how it works technically, we borrowed some of the functionality from ID for our user authentication. Um, user authentication happens entirely in the browser and it uses your existing OpenStreetMap account. Um, on the back end, we use Postgres. After trying a couple different options, we settled on Postgres and uh, uses HStore very heavily. Um, and the front end is written in React, which makes handling all the different views that you've seen uh, really convenient. So I want to uh, touch on a couple of things we're looking at for the future of Twofix and basically data improvements in OpenStreetMap at Mapbox. Um, one of the first things is a JOSM plugin for Twofix. Um, the API that makes the front end possible isn't really op opinionated on where it's going to be used. So it's really easy to have a plugin in JOSM that doesn't need, that doesn't necessitate somebody hopping between the browser and this external app. Um, this is created by Ruben, who's uh, on our data team in Peru. And using the exact same API that we use for the browser front end, he's able to hook in and highlight individual issues directly in JOSM. Um, he can select different tasks, you can mark items as done, you can skip over certain items. Um, so you're collaborating with everybody else on the team um, without needing to go back to the browser. Um, Tile Reduce is a project we've recently been working on for detecting our own errors. So I mentioned earlier that we use third-party services for knowing which errors to look at in OpenStreetMap, but we're also um, running scripts. So we've also in the past have run scripts to find our own, but Tile Reduce is a new project for finding these errors on a large scale. Um, basically what it does is it uses the existing vector tile technology and stack that we're using for rendering our maps uh, at Mapbox 
and it's querying the actual data in the underlying tiles. Um, so while you might have lots of questions about what is in a tile, we're pulling out the geometry, running some analysis on it, and coming up with an answer about what is in a certain area. In this case, you can measure the number of miles in all these roads, but we're also looking at things like comparing and conflating two data sets. In this case, you have uh, OpenStreetMap in purple and Tiger in blue, and yellow is highlighting all the yellow differences. Uh, yellow is highlighting all the differences between them, which we would have our team focus on. So uh, lastly, we, have, we want to bring in live updates to this data. Um, most of this is static. We're dealing with static CSVs that we run uh, in a process that goes one-off, and we can, especially with tile reduce, we can run these things very quickly and get the results in a two-fix, but we want to automate this entire process. So while we have this rendering stack that is pulling in live OpenStreetMap data, if we tie it to analysis through tile reduce, we can come up with, um, we can find out where these issues are cropping up in OpenStreetMap as they happen, and hopefully hand it off to our data team and anybody else um, as quickly as possible so they get fixed before, say, one of our customers sees it or anybody else. Um, so that's everything I've got. That's the URL for 2Fix, and that's me on Twitter. Any questions? <laughs> yes. No. Yeah, um, so she's saying that um, it might be useful to have a video or something explaining what's going on with each item and how you should fix it. Yeah, I, I totally agree. We don't have any real documentation right now on how you should be approaching these things. We're thinking that people are coming into it knowing what they're going to be doing. But yeah, that'd be really useful. I totally agree. It's something we should do. Um, so what we found is really the problems are like never ending. We can keep finding as many as we want. And really the, the thing is prioritizing where we're going to be fixing these things. So we're looking at urban areas and large cities first. Um, so we're fixing tens of thousands of things there. Um, I'm focused mostly on our data team of about 20 people. There are other people using the app as well, but um, I don't really keep track of them. Um, but we're going through tens of thousands of items every day. All right, that's all the time I've got. Thank you.